I've been on the Lepton team for about four years. Um, I write a lot of tools um, and firmware for the Lepton. And as of recently, I've been helped, or I'm, I've been helping the, the mobile team get the SDKs running. Um, OK, so Dan went over these slides. Let me uh, fast forward real quick. Sorry. One second. OK, so this is the maker tech dive here. The lepton is, um, I think that's 22 pins, but there's two protocols that you'll implement when you connect the lepton to a physical device. There's I2C, which is command and control only, and then there's SPY, which is for video. Um, and everybody here is probably going to be using this breakout board um, with all of the pins necessary for those two protocols. Here's an example of how to just plug it in. Um, wiring's straightforward. Uh, the host would probably be your Raspberry Pi, and your Lepton's your slave. Uh, the Lepton is a real-time computing system so that you're required to pull frames off of it um, in a given amount of time. If, you, if your Lepton gets out of sync, you're going to want to deassert the chip select or spy clock for one second and then resync. Um, okay. So you have 37 milliseconds to pull out an entire frame before you'll hit um, these time sync issues. And this is, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. So for the, the hackers, we have the 80 by 60 lepton for you guys. Um, and again, data sent over SPY. It's 16 bits per pixels. And it's actually 14 bits, which is 0 to 16, 383. Um, so when you're pulling frames, it's the bandwidth that you're going to need is 9,600 bytes per frame, which is, which is not that bad. Um, and one important thing is that if you're working with the, the, the lepton physically, it's not radiometrically calibrated, which means it takes a bunch of work for you to get real temperature values from the lepton. You have to take a black body and um, calibrate you know, all across these temperatures, and then do some curve fitting and create a lookup table to get the real temperature values. But if you, if you can do that in 24 hours, uh, I'd be really impressed. <laughs> um, <laughs> OK. Um, I'll skip this. OK, AGC and colorization, which is what you're asking about. Um, if you guys haven't heard of AGC, it stands for Automatic Gain Control. Um, our sensor gives you 14-bit data, right? But when you think about color, um, grayscale is 0 to 255. Um, there's a discrepancy, right? You, only, you, you have this 14-bit number, but you have to move it to the 8-bit space. If you divide linearly, if you just do, um, you know, you evenly divide the buckets, you're going to have very low contrast, and the scene's going to look really washed out because, you know, you. You're assigning buckets to spaces that you'll never see, right? There's a lot of wasted allocations. So um, we have to do um, gain control. So what we do is we find, so if this is the 14-bit space, but all your values are in here, you don't really care about everything that you're not representing, right? So you find the min and max of the scene, and then you divide that by 255 to get your buckets. So that's, that's a, the, if you guys are using the Raspberry Pi, you guys will see that we do that. And that's um, a really easy way to do um, color maps. And so now you have 255 values, so 0 to 255. These color lookup, these color lookup tables, um, if you want the, the LUTs, we call them LUTs lookup tables, um, we can give you those. So let's say 0 maps to like a particular shade of green. We have all of those mappings for you in a text file that you guys can use. If you guys are using the Raspberry Pi code, um, it's already in there. You guys will see this giant just array with all the values. Oh, OK. Uh, I think I already talked about this. Um, you'd have to calibrate at multiple temperatures, curve, do some curve fitting. It's not necessarily linear, but if you take enough points, um, it, it's linear. Um, OK, so we have an SDK. Uh, and it uses I2C. Um, the only thing I think you guys will really need for this hackathon with the SDK 
is the flat field command. Um, if you need more than that, I can help you. But uh, again, for the kinds of projects you guys are going to be building, you only really care about flat field. And what flat field does is, it, again, it closes the shutter. Um, and it, it grabs all those values. And it, it does what we call non-uniformity correction. So it just basically removes all the noise from the scene. Um, so the lepton, when it's plugged in, when you apply power, it does a flat field right away. So give it one or two seconds before you really do anything. You're here, you'll, you'll hear it click. You don't have to do any management, though. So you can just ask for f frames blindly. And if it's doing a flat field, it'll just send you repeated frames. Um, to get up and running with the lepton, you could completely disconnect the I2C pins and just connect um, power and spy and run completely with that. Um, we've seen projects where they don't even use the SDK. So you, again, to reiterate, you don't need the SDK to pull to get real frames. Oh, this is another important thing. If you try to, we have non-shuttered leptons for you guys. So if your lepton doesn't have this silver metallic shutter on it, and you run a flat field, if you run this flat field command, it'll create a ghost. So if you're standing in front of it, and you flat field, and then you move away, um, you, your ghost will be present in the image. Because it's basically normalizing with the values that it's seeing. So if you're standing in front of it without putting a uniform black body, um, you're giving it, you're storing the wrong um, image map. Um, just some code. Uh, some electronic parameters, or electrical parameters. Uh, this isn't really, if you're using a Raspberry Pi, we've sort of sorted all this out for you guys. Um, one thing to note, if you guys ever, if you guys want to connect your lepton without using our breakout board, the one thing that's really important is that you provide a 25 megahertz clock with a crystal oscillator. But just use the, just use the breakout boards. It's, it's a lot easier than having to solder onto those tiny pins. Um, yeah. So I think that's it. Unless you guys have any questions, um, how do you calibrate? Um, let's take that. Up. Yeah, it, we have like a thirty-page document that I can send you. It's it's really complicated. Yeah. Any other? Yes, you need a uniform black body where you can control the temperature. Yeah. <laughs> AGC? No. No. Yeah. We always give you the. Yes, yes.